Welcome to another roundtable episode of Film Sack. That's right. There's no movie to talk about here. It's more of a broader topic, and we do these occasionally. We're happy to be doing this one right around the holidays, and we hope we find you all well. I'm Scott Johnson with two Brians. Hello, Brians. Hello. Oh, oh hi, one Scott. <laughs> and, yep, and one Randy. Hi, Randy. Oh, hello. Uh, we're yeah. back. Oh, you, you guys excited to talk about director's cuts and why they work and why they don't? And all that sort I of thing. I am so ready to talk about that. And if we get it wrong, we'll just go back and edit it later. Yeah. <laughs> <Why not? laughs> That's great. The extended edition of this uh, podcast is going to be yes, uh, very right. love it. Randy, earlier you posted a list of maybe the ones that had substantial, the most substantial changes, at least famously mm-hmm. anyway. Well, and I, I think that's that's where you come at this uh, this topic in the first place. Like, mm. if a director's cut, you know, added two minutes and didn't really change the film, I don't think anybody ever really talks about it. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. There's right. like, and there's that's all true. kinds of examples of that. And there's uh, like, we had a uh, this this trend between like 2002 and maybe. 15 years later of these unrated editions of movies oh, where I they just, they that. just went back and added like a minute of people yeah. using the F word or whatever. And it yeah. doesn't change the movie at all. That's not what I think people talk about. No, they talk but, about but as a key to this, right. If you're, if the director themselves doesn't come and do a massive tweak, uh, maybe his original vision or stuff he had ideas about later or the studio uh, constrained his ability to do what he wanted creatively and now he has the ability to do it. Blade Runner comes to mind. It's a That's yeah. one that's a popular one. Um, that That's the key, right? We're not talking about, uh, hey, we it, made a special edition of uh, you know yeah. some movie where he added four bits that got taken out and the director had really nothing to do with this decision. This is the studio making a, an extended edition of a thing. That's not that's right. not this. No, it was I, well, almost always okay. about the director being upset that he was uh, cut off at the knees. His vision. He wasn't able, yeah, right. Vision exactly. Make, yes. Okay, but I, I want to draw a distinction between an extended edition that adds some cut scenes and right. the Lord of the Rings, <laughs> because right. oh, yeah. we're, we're absolutely <laughs> talking the about things. the Lord of the Rings when it, what what you have is essentially an eight hour movie that becomes an almost 12 hour movie. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of yeah. stuff. Yeah. And that's the do one you, I do don't you think like. That's, I don't like those, right. those editions of the thing. Well, well, you can talk more about those, but yes, go ahead. And so, isn't that sometimes I think that's a temptation by a director, especially somebody like Peter Jackson, who films everything mm-hmm. and films it forever. And he doesn't mind letting a movie breathe, but he knows that you can't have a six hour movie at release at launch. Right. You can't do that. Right. Yeah. Do I think that. he knows that going in. Right. He, there's no way that yeah. Peter Jackson was like. Oi, I thought I could do Oi. that's my, I was my version. Cheerfully of expecting that everything I filmed is going to make it right. into yeah. the yeah. release. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's they bullshit. know they know some of this and I think some of it is a business decision because they, they know that they'll later have these extended editions that are going to make bank and they did. I mean they really made yeah. money on those extended editions at a time where DVD and then Blu-ray were at their peak. And, so, and it's kind of frustrating yeah. because um, I own Lord of the Rings series uh, in several locations, and I have all kinds of different variations of of this stupid thing. And I'm like, I never know yeah. which one I want to watch. <laughs> How many uh, versions did you have to buy of that of that God, uh, series? Once know. once you know you've I mean. watched the extended editions a couple of times, you mm-hmm. can't not watch them. Like right. if you watch the theatrical release. Yeah, you'll 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 yeah. feel something, and it feels wrong when you skip over something that you yeah. you're expecting. Yeah, yeah. I it, it's interesting though because if I know people who swear by those extended editions, and that's all they'll see now, to them that's the movie. Right. I struggle with that, and it's not for length; it's for the girth. specialness of the mm-hmm. moment. I it's for girth. <laughs> <laughs> it's for those special feelings you have in the theater about girth, yeah. right. um, about the movie while you're watching it. And you kind of, that's what imprints itself on you. So later when you say, Hey, I've got yeah. another hour and a half of this. I don't, I don't tie those things into what I saw. And to me, it's like, what's this extra shit? Like the, the aliens one, which is more of an extended edition anyway, but that one, the second alien movie, is really bad. That that one, I cannot watch the extended scenes. I can't do it. I don't like it. We did it for here for the show, and that was fine. Mm. Right, right. And I'm glad we did it for the show. But if I'm ever going to rewatch that again, and I will many times, I don't want to see that one. I want to see what I think, I think you're right, of as the original. It's, it's already Alien is kind of like a, a, a slow ride, and it's kind of nice to to give it a little bit of brevity. You, so you don't need the Newt and her family on the train. Is that no. the specific part that you're? Yes, the yeah. train. Yeah. The the part earlier where she meets her mother. 
Uh, right. Oh, right. Right. Where, right. Where, uh, yeah. Ripley. Yeah. Right. The, yeah. Uh, so the auto no guns. development going there. Much, yeah. The right. scene with the auto guns and, and, and them, tr- they keep running out of ammo and that's how they know the aliens are in that hallway mm-hmm. or whatever. They're just mm-hmm. kind of superfluous and not needed. Um, and so I don't appreciate it for what it is. But then you say to me, Hey Scott, did you like Blade Runner in the theater? Yes, I did. Which do you prefer? <sighs> the director's cut a hundred times that, over. The, yeah, yeah, bring which, me the bring me the origami uh, a unicorn cut because that is the only way I'll watch it now. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah. I need I need Deckard to be a replicant. I don't yes. need this happy. Yes. Let's watch almost. Let's almost watch the beginning of the Shining again uh, moment. Yeah, where they're driving off into the, the sunset. Example. Such bullcrap, and not and then yeah. the the the, yeah. the the unneeded and also unwanted uh, narration that Harrison Ford gives at the beginning or throughout mm-hmm. the whole thing. That was not meant right. to be there. You could tell when no. Harrison recorded it in post that he didn't want to do it. He knew the director hated it. So just had that feeling, and it also right? like you don't want to hear Harrison Ford uh using the N-word. No, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to hear that now. Don't I don't want to hear that then. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to hear yeah. it. I, yeah. I, you can call a Wookiee a bad name, but that's it. That's all you get. <laughs> The nerf herder oh, should be the only N word that, yeah. that uh, Harrison Ford ever that's, says. That's the only one we want. But the, but yeah. that's the thing is, I feel like I'm now pushing us in a corner where we realize that a lot of these stories, apocryphal or otherwise, about how we go from theatrical to director's cut being superior, is almost always Ridley Scott movies. Why? Mm-hmm. Why is it um, him? So it's uh, there's some there's some other examples. Uh, like uh, look at this list, and there are some examples of directors who had a better vision than someone else imparted on the original film Mm -hmm. and they they they're able to wrestle it back toward what they what they liked Mm -hmm. uh we talked about this a bit with watchmen i feel like uh it's it's probably a gradient and that's the that's why it's so interesting Mm -hmm. because on one end you have films where it's just unnecessary, completely unnecessary. The film is kind of going to be what it is, no matter what you add or subtract. Mm -hmm. And then on the other end, you have, Oh wow, that was a steam steaming pile of crap that got fixed later. Mm -hmm. And you know, so like my example on the first side of the gradient is Leon, the professional, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a film where, uh, Luc Besson had some ideas that it feels like the ideas occurred to him after the fact. And that's, right, right. and that's, that's an exact, you're not going to really change this movie that much. It's, it's a, it's a very straightforward story, right? You, maybe you got a little bit too much of, uh, an underage girl in the thing, right? So you just right. pull back on that, right. Uh, that sort of thing, but you're not going to really change the movie. Yeah. And I then could, yeah, yeah, on the that. other end, you know, you're talking about like Blade Runner, like, steaming pile of crap compared to <laughs> all the fixes right yeah 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 in comparison i mean i still think you know non-director's cut of blade runner is still a fantastic movie and it's the first version i ever saw i was in california i was visiting my grandparents but they had a um irish dancing thing that they were going to so they're like we're going to order you a pizza and get you whatever movie you want and i'm like i want to see blade runner so they went to the video <laughs> store and got it and i watched it you know uh, I want to, that is like my dream oh, night, like having the grand, that, just yeah, them going, yeah. I'm going to get you some pizza yeah, and a exactly. movie. Yeah, <gasps> exactly. And like, it, it, they just cater to me, basically. Yeah. <laughs> say, yeah. If it, you really, you really tripped a wire in my head on that, too. It's I'm like, gonna, I want to go. I'm going to stay here. Right. I'm I want that now. Here. You know what sucks <laughs> is now we don't, we, it's it's too easy for us now to say, I'm doing this this Saturday. Everyone leave me alone. Yeah. But I I like it better when yeah. there are authority figures giving me the way the the wherewithal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not doing any research to find out if it's a <laughs> movie that eleven year old Brian should be watching. <laughs> exactly, Twelve year old or however old Blade I Runner. was that, when that came out. That's that funny. sounds fine. Blade Runner, that yeah. sounds fine. Sounds oh, fine. Sure. Someone yeah. running blades. Okay, go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's so, like doing Robocop yeah. or something when you're a kid. That's just like you don't the parents don't know. And yeah, it's fine. No, and you got no. away with something. I'm proud of you. I think that's amazing. And I want to go back in time and live that night one more time. That's yeah. Right. Oh, for sure. Time. Yeah. But anyway. So now that we now that we've established this gradient, right? It goes from fixes that, you know, you really did doesn't doesn't change the movie at all sure. to sure. wildly changing the movie. There's all sorts of room in the middle for things. Like like we you know started with the Lord of the Rings. That's an example of and there's several of them where it's so great. The film is just great and you just want more. 
That's yeah, all. Right. Yeah. You, you, the audience, want more. The I people who made the film want more. to put out more. Right. Yeah. And so, like, Dances with Wolves, I think, is a good example. You just have just more. It was a good movie. Like, hey, do, you know, what, what was edited out of that? Well, well, it's pretty good stuff. Okay, well, let's add that. And people will watch it and probably enjoy it. You yeah. know? Yeah. Whereas <laughs> some of them, uh, you know, George Lucas is famous for – um, adding stuff or maybe changing a little thing, not didn't really change his movies, right? The the especially episode four, yeah. like it, you, take it or leave it, man. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. he didn't change the movie. Yeah. But no. my gosh, did he introduce controversy? Yeah. I oh, love the guess. idea of how he <laughs> was the doing. shot first. Yeah. yeah. Right. It, I did not appreciate it at the time, and I I still like having the option. I didn't like how Lucas locked us into so many things at one point in time. He had such control over everything. And as, as, as viewers and consumers, I like to purchase things in the way that I want to purchase them. So if I want the theatrical release version mm-hmm. of this movie and I want it on the most recent format DVD, I, sh- I feel like he should be a nice guy yeah. and offer that to me. But <laughs> he, nice he is very, yeah, he was very, you know, he's very much like, no, this is, this is my it's thing. The only version that exists anymore now. You yeah. Know? And it's going to be like this. Live with it. Turd. Live with it. Yeah. You turd. Yeah. I'll, don't yeah. worry. Uh, Disney will finish it's, what I started. It's the only reason I still have the laser discs of Star Wars is so that I can yes. have a digital version, albeit one that I have to flip the album or flip the the discs over three yeah. times yeah. during the, during the watching. Yeah, and not that I'll ever I can't believe you don't have. Still, I can't believe it's twenty twenty three and don't have an auto flipper. Well, Jeez. didn't Whatever. they? Didn't Whatever. they? So my. Okay, my memory may be a little saucy on this. Oh, but yeah, no, you're right. You're, I know what you're about to say, and you're absolutely right. They did come out with a version that lets you watch the original release. It had a brown, it was a box set with a brown yeah. cover. Yeah. A tattooing and was, cover. Yeah, and it was DVD. But we had to bitch a lot to get that. Oh, yeah, Scott. we did, but, but it was also very yeah. limited. You had to get real lucky yeah. to get it. They didn't yeah. run very many. And now, if I go to Disney Plus, is that even an option? I can't watch both versions. No, I? I think you only get the special edition. See, why wouldn't they want to cater to that? I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, maybe it feels I, redundant for them to have two versions of essentially. Yeah, the same it, it's, film. it might be. It's, there might be, might be server load, or, or there might be licensing problems. There's all mm-hmm. kinds of issues we're probably not thinking of. But yeah, it yeah. sucks as viewers that we can't get access to the thing we want, and we we mm-hmm. don't. I mean. I don't mind seeing the special stuff that Lucas put in, but he's got to give me the option to still have the original stuff in my. It is the only way you're going to see uh, McClunky. Is, you know, here, yeah. uh, Greedo, Greedo's uttering that great line. McClunky, yeah. McClunky should not because, be removed for any reason. Right. Part part of part of what's going on is okay. Uh, I, you have a movie. But I also have nostalgia. I have ownership yeah. of this yeah. of this thing as well. Not just you. I have memories. I have feelings attached in my brain to the experience. And if you take that away from me, I'm a drug addict. Yeah, but it's, in it's interesting, right? Because it, it, maybe this is a whole other roundtable, but this concept of whose who's is it? Like, is yeah, it ours is it? now? Yeah. Once you put it out, is it is it ours as much as it is yours, so George Lucas, fans. or anyone else? There, there's right? a reason why there's public domain because eventually, it, it, the the culture of the art impact uh, resonates in uh, you know in, in social culture, everything, and so it has to be accessible to those people. You can't just block it off. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I don't I mean, know. Is there has there ever been like a illustration you made that initially you weren't proud of? You went back and you redid it and said, "All right, this is this is kind of what I was originally trying to uh, trying to get to." I had kind of the opposite thing happen where I created a thing and then somebody took it. You know the in fact it's Star Wars related. That's funny. It is was, it the Walker, the girl with the Walker? No, no, it's thing? the one with oh. uh, the bar. guy. Yeah, the Admiral Snack Bar one. Oh, bar. right. And that yeah. one took off and was really popular for me and sold a ton. But when I started to see it happen, pop out on on Reddit and other places online. Oh, right. They changed it from it's a snack. No, they changed it from it's a wrap to it's a snack. And I don't know why they did that or why they thought that yeah. was better. It rhymes less. It yeah, actually rhymes exactly. less, but that yeah. one went viral like a whole bunch of times. So for some people, it's obviously not the scale of Star Wars, but for some people, right, 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 that's yeah. the version. Yeah. And when I show up and go, no, 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 the, my original vision was rap, not snack. They kind of <laughs> bought it. They're like, man. I had a guy say, yeah. I'll buy your print. Blunt stuff you, now. <laughs> I had a guy say, I'll buy your print, but you got to change it to snack. Oh, no, really? Oh, and, I, and I did it. 
and I almost oh, didn't. Did you? I almost didn't do it because I was just. I like, am sell out. I was annoyed. No, I I I <laughs> appreciate <laughs> I ex- I appreciate that you had to you know you had to make yeah. that call and you and you did yeah. you didn't get it yeah I like that That's yeah I didn't know what else though. to do honestly because it Respect. was just it was just a, it was a nice guy he was a listener of shows he likes the art he collected a bunch of stuff and he's like yeah but I only think of it was snack so mm-hmm. so some of that's going on with Lucas. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, what I meant yeah. for this to be was midichlorians, and people are like, "No, no my no, star, no, my, no. my Star Wars isn't about <laughs> magic and kiss the sister." Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, there's so much yeah. stuff you have to retcon anyway when you're trying to make a gigantic, multi-decade series like Star Wars. Right. right. People get hung up on the little things, and it must drive him crazy. But I'm torn. Like, he did create it. It is his thing. Yeah. He probably should have some say. And right now he has none, by the way. He should have a lot of say. And, and these days he has the, zero say because like, he doesn't own it anymore. He sold it. What do you what do you make of the extreme reactions? Like I mean, we we, mm-hmm. we talk you a lot about ruin my childhood. Always you yeah, just always you just go. ignore trolls, right? But yeah. there is definitely a thing under that. There's a there's a reason that people so extremely react to changes. I think they don't know how to form they don't know how to have a, a a rational conversation about it, and that's unfortunate. But I do think I think you're right. There's a there's a real emotion behind it about this thing that affected their childhood. I mean, I think all of us, all yeah. four of us, can probably speak to how much Star Wars, as an example, affected us right. growing up. And there have been times where I've I've been like that. You've ruined my childhood, kind of attitude. Yeah. Um, I think maturity helps, and you just get older and you deal with it. But you know, and, and part of that is accepting. Well. Don't forget, this was a movie that was greenlit, so money could be made. This yeah. isn't some, you know, it happened to be a giant cultural uh, touchstone for generations of people, but that wasn't the original plan. The original plan was he had an idea, studio said, okay, sure, and they made a sci-fi movie that they weren't sure was going to succeed. And yeah. once you accept the reality of what those things are and that they're not some magical you know, f- fantastic boondoggle in the sky that you are sharing in a s- slight mo- uh, sun ray from, and that is your right. personal sun ray. Once you get past all that, it's a little easier to talk about it rationally and not be a dork, you know? Yeah. 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 Which I hope, you know, but we, you we, can, you can, emotions, man. No, Sometimes emotions are real. Rational. They're, they're real. Like yeah. I don't, I don't, I guess I've gotten to a point now though, where it's like, if they screw something up in star Wars and they do quite a bit, I just kind of roll my eyes and go, well, all right. I still have yeah. the old stuff. It's fine, and that goes that, to that's always my point. As long as I got exactly. the old stuff, I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. And you can, and you can, you know, you can take those stories. It doesn't matter what's official canon, what's not. You can say, you know, what I actually really did like Splinter of the Mind's Eye. I really did like this other thing, and say, yeah, it may not be canon, but I really enjoyed it, and I still think back on enjoying it. And it doesn't, you know, you know even what? though they retconned mm-hmm. it out, doesn't mean it wasn't a real thing. You know right? what real right. fans do? Mm. They go Except- make fan edits. Hmm. Oh, sure. Uh, sure. Man, you ought to see all the fan edits of Superman 2 mm. after some of that footage <laughs> from the Richard Donner cuts do they, made, do they was keep made available. The, the plastic wrap S uh, that, that uh, pulls uh, non into the According to zone. one of the 20 different versions you want to see, Ibit. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> it's, it's, some of the versions are nothing. The versions. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Some of the versions, it's nothing but that. It's mm. just it's Superman. It's just that over and over yeah. and over again. Yeah, it's like a it's like a 10 hour loop on YouTube. It's just it's mm. amazing. It's a great cut. Oh, I love those. Those are the most yeah. superf- mm-hmm. superfluous waste of time, and I respect <laughs> them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like for the, somebody having the idea of yeah. saying, let's have him ripping that thing off his chest and covering what's his name in it over and over and over for 10 hours right, just right. because we can. Like <laughs> it's such a colossal waste of time, bandwidth, effort, everything. I love yeah. it. I want that to never not be a possible thing. That's true freedom, ladies and gentlemen. That's true freedom. <laughs> yeah. You know what I, I think mean? there's what our forefathers fought for. That's right. So it was long, so many years it. ago. Yeah. I think you're yeah. raising an interesting question, which is, are there people who just always like more of the thing they like? And are there people who don't like, re- like really genuinely don't like, I who want, don't I don't like just, it just because they changed it kind of thing. Right. I would just prefer to see the thing that I originally saw. That's what got set in my brain as being the thing. Mm. And I just don't want you to, I don't need ads or, subtractions like just yeah. give me that's the when thing that's when nostalgia is higher on the list of 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 the reasons why you like why you want to revisit something right 
Yeah, right. As feels, opposed to you yeah. want to you want to see the extended version right. because uh, not because of nostalgia, but because of just a love of the art. Well, that's right. the trick that the Lord yeah. of the Rings played and that, say, Star Wars or others didn't. The nostalgia is you see a thing, it sets in your brain, you love it forever. And then 25 years later, they dick with it. And then it yeah. feels discordant. And you're it's like a, mm-hmm. suddenly there's a bird in the room and you're trying to have dinner. You're like, wait a minute. This isn't like what I expected. This isn't this is, feels weird to have this bird in here. Well, if you do Lord of the Rings style, even though I don't really like the extended editions, they get away with it a bit more because they said, here's the movie. Welcome to the theater. Enjoy yourselves. By the way, about a year from now, there'll be a big six DVD set that will have all the makings of and an extended edition of the thing. So people, people are already roped into the, the full nostalgia will be just a little bit over time, about a year's amount of time before they go, ooh, I get to see Boromir say more shit. Awesome. Right. <laughs> right. But it's not the same as waiting 25 years and then having tweaks to the thing you remember. You know? How did we did we feel that way when uh, James Cameron said, yep, still not done with Terminator 2. Uh, how about the third director's cut? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. I, He's in trouble right now, right? Isn't he in trouble because the, the he just put out a um, True Lies uh, redo that was AI yes. upscaled? Oh, that's super paint like computer painty. Oh, yeah. Yep. The, the the clip I saw. It's horrible. Yeah. Horrible. It is horrible. I yeah. can't, I can't wait to watch that. I can't, I'm going to, <laughs> right. I'm serious. Yeah, just, you can see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and what it comes to is with, with movie, most movies, I'm just not precious about the, what, the, what it used to look like, like Terminator two punch it up. Let's go. I, I am yeah, not right. precious about that movie and mm-hmm. there are going to be movies that I am. This is not one of them. True yeah. lies. I, you know, we sacked it. You know, you heard my opinions. It's just not, you know, it's not important, but I want to see, I want to see if they messed it up or something. That sounds yeah. cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone looks like rubber. It's a weird effect. Like, uh, hmm. it's yeah. a, it's, so it's AI it's, assisted <laughs> upscaling is what it is. And it's kind of a oh, new, a new use of it. They've been trying to work on it for years. I have no doubt one day this will be as It'll be like digital photography. Nobody will know the difference. Mm-hmm. Right, but right, right now, this is it's a <laughs> right now uncanny. it's True Lies Polar Express edition. Yeah. <laughs> so you got like Tom Arnold looking all stretchy and funky. Nobody yeah. wants that. Not even Tom Arnold no. wants that. No. You know, <laughs> or maybe he does, or maybe Roseanne wants. Maybe that. he I don't, does. I don't yeah, know. Who knows? Right. Yeah. But yeah, like sure. like when are when are we the final cut, and when are the directors the final cut? Because like right mm-hmm. now we talk about Ridley Scott and such hallowed tones when it comes to so many classic films but right now he's embroiled in a bit of a mess because he took a bunch of liberties around the historical stuff with napoleon and everybody has dragged him for it i've never seen such a dragging and he's not responding great himself he comes back with quips like i think i think it was said last week he's like what do you say deal with it or what was his thing oh yeah yeah it was uh it was yeah deal with it yeah Yeah, like big deal deal. (laughs) you can tell directors are getting tired of getting they don't like the internet i don't think but no, 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 no they really it's, don't. Yeah. The internet, internet comments have really changed a lot. And I don't even know why most of these creators, a lot of creators have no problem with totally ignoring the internet. But for some reason, they feel like they got to engage. And I'm like, okay. Well, I some guess. of it too is the pressers, the press events they go to, which they are used to, the person sitting in yeah, the chair across yeah. them will go, now we've noticed online on Twitter, uh, about 4,000 right. people uh, liked this tweet and asked this question. So they're forcing it on him in a way. And if I'm Ridley Scott, like everybody's been going, you know, they've been mad at him, but I kind of right. feel for him. Um, oh, yeah. Not that he needs me to feel for him. He's got loads of money. And even before he was a filmmaker, he's rich. Like Poor, whatever. poor rich man. Yeah. But I, expe- I respect him creatively. I think he's one of the best filmmakers that we've ever produced, meaning humanity, all of those things. And he's responsible for a lot of stuff I love. So. I look at it as, well, yeah, of course you're going to be annoyed. There's, there's a reason Scorsese is annoyed every time somebody says something about, you know, your movie's too long or it's not an MCU film or, or whatever, the, whatever the stuff he's always dodging those bullets too. And then he creates his own controversy by responding to it. Well, what do we expect these old farts to say? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They came from a time, you know, where this, none of this was a thing. And now it's suddenly a thing and it's being foisted upon them. Yeah. Let mm-hmm. them make what they're going to make and then we judge it like we always did. Let's just wait till they die and talk about them behind your back, just like we've always done. Exactly, where they can't say anything and just it's just us. What's wrong with that? (laughs) So, so let me steer us to the big example of this topic. 
um, it's it's kind of the reason we're having this discussion because uh, we we have been noticing that uh, the movie Payback is streaming here and there the mm-hmm. last few months. Uh, you know, listeners have said, "Hey, you should sack Payback." Hell yeah. And my reaction is always, "Which version? Which version are, right, are, right. are is streaming?" Because I have a pretty visceral reaction to what happened with the movie Payback. So Brian Helgeland is making this movie. Uh, in the middle of making the movie, he wins an Oscar for LA confidential and he gets fired. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. It is weird. Like he's making a movie, he gets fired and then other people continue f- and finish the film and release it. And it's a really good movie. And that's upsetting to Brian Helgeland, right? Cause yeah. like, uh, that sucks, you know, like yeah. he wasn't yeah. involved in any of the editing, any of the final decisions. And it's a good movie. It's it's very entertaining, in my opinion. The theatrical that. release, love that movie. Yeah. So, Brian Helgeland waits in uh, waits in the wings for I don't know fifteen years or something, uh, ten years. He waits for ten years, and then he uh, is able to get an opportunity to take all of the footage and all the stuff and make his own version of Payback, mm-hmm. and it's called Straight Up. Mm-hmm. Payback straight up, and uh, you know we refer now to it as a director's cut. Mm-hmm. And I'm here to tell you, it's not as good as the theatrical release. I yeah. mean, just just not as good. It's I a different movie. Fully it agree. tells a somewhat different story, and it doesn't have any of the same good humor. The original theatrical release is a fun movie, mm-hmm. and straight up is not. It's yeah. not. He doesn't want it to be fun. You could tell he's got feelings <laughs> as you as you're watching this thing. Yeah. And I just find that really fascinating because unlike Ridley Scott adding 16 minutes to Gladiator because you like Gladiator and and everybody likes the movie and wants more, Brian Helkelin messes around. Mm, you know, mm-hmm. he, he tries to make a different movie. Yeah. And, and part, I, well, just, I wonder if it's because there is, there's some antagonism with somebody else taking over your project, right? Like that's kind absolutely, of, how are you, avo- how could you avoid that? You know, be hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, not yeah. that I, I I agree with you a thousand percent. By the way, that movie is amazing, and I can't stand the director's cut. It's or whatever they would you call it, straight up, straight up, straight up. The, yeah, is the is the, uh, the Brian Helgeland re edit of <laughs> of the original. And footage. I was so excited to see that when it came out because I was like, oh sweet, the, the original guy. All right, let's see what he has to say. It'll only add. It'll only be great. I'm sure. Right, nope. Right. Nope. Nope. Big nope. <laughs> and that, a, that's, I've only I mean, ever seen the uh, the original. So and, you got, you so saw like the to, good one to try to, to try to bolster my own nonsense here. Um, what I, what I found myself really quickly saying is I'll, I'll, I'll sack this. I would love to sack this, but only the original, not the director's cut. Right. If you guys want to, if, if the director's cut is what's streaming, we're not sacking it. Yeah. And I'm like, mm-hmm. why am I so, what, why am I so <laughs> angry about this? Yeah. And, <laughs> and the answer is because I want you and everyone to see the good movie. Mm-hmm. right like yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. that i have like some anger at the director <laughs> like i i don't care i want you to enjoy this thing that i enjoy yeah i agree with you mm-hmm. and also i would see i would feel the opposite about blade runner i would want you to see the good one and i would want that to be the director's cut and not mm-hmm. theatrical and i don't know why there's a difference i guess the difference is it's the proof in the pudding is the movie demonstrably better than when you left it. And if it is, it's hard to ignore. Like the director's cut of director or of uh, Blade Runner is excellent and it's hard to say any otherwise. It doesn't yeah. feel like a waste of time or extra for nothing or a, a money grab. It feels like a genuine artistic improvement. And I would say that's def- definitely true of Ridley Scott's own uh, Kingdom of Heaven, which I think the theatrical is barely watchable and mm. the director's cut is one of his best movies, if not his best movie. How does that even work? Like, yeah. how is that even possible? But that's how you know is just the work, right? Is the work good enough? Right. And I don't. Well, think- once you start drinking real coffee and stop drinking Sanka, can you go back to Sanka? No, I don't think so. <laughs> no, you can't. Okay, okay, no, but it's the best and, part and I of think waking the up. Conclusion we're all circling around is if you have a person who has never drank coffee and is interested in drinking coffee, and mm-hmm. you want to ease them into <laughs> it, right? You yeah. might give them Sanka first. <laughs> start with this and see what you think of it, and then I'm <laughs> really going to blow yeah. your mind. Let's uh, uh, right. right. And that's what it is to you. 
you can handle Sanka first. Huh? I, How about that? I feel like yeah. that counts double for movies. Like if someone knows nothing about Lord of the Rings, I would insist that they watch shorter versions of oh the my film. God, yeah. You know, yeah. like it just, it just makes sense to me. That's a good point. Like if you're going to watch, yeah. If you're saying it's my first mm-hmm. time, I don't know if I even like fantasy. I'd say they do the theatricals. They're already kind of long, you know, they're already yeah. long movies. Yeah. And and then see what you think, and then if you really enjoyed yourself, hey, you got an extra treat for you because these are these are good extended editions. It's not like they're bad; they don't ruin the movies. But if they want them, they can have them. And maybe that's the way yeah. to always do it. Maybe we don't treat the theater st- like the dumping ground. You know, you start by asking them, "Do you like three hour movies or uh, like two and a half hour movies?" <laughs> and then and they, when they look at on their you. answer, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I personally would like. I don't know. How long are those extended? They're like four hours, right? Something They're like, like four hours. That's true, yeah. I mean, that's a lot. Three hours in a pipe dream. That's, that's what's keeping lot. me from seeing Killers of the Flower Moon in theaters. It's like, all right, I yeah. need I need, I need, need a uh, place where I can pause, maybe split into a two-night event, movie event. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm making my own uh, miniseries is what I'm doing. Yes, yeah. exactly. Now, There's our- glad you brought that up because my third favorite film of 2015 is Hateful Eight. I loved Hateful Eight. It's, still, it's my mm. favorite Tarantino movie. It's one of my favorite mm-hmm. Westerns. Love it. Um, it's very long. It's a long movie. And when I heard he was doing a director's cut, I went, oh my gosh, can you make, you can actually make that longer. That's going to be insane. What they did instead is they made a version for Netflix that is a broken up as like a mini series. So it's in chunks, like in parts. And the movie happens to lend itself really well for these breaks because they're, it's their perfect story breaks. And it's so much more of a consumable piece of content in that form than an extended edition film release would have been, but they keep both on the service. So if I want to go watch that, I can choose. If Mm. I want just the theatrical quick run, I can do that. Like more of that, please. Yeah. You know, like like more choices, more choice. Yeah. I guess not, you know, don't overwhelm us with choice. I don't want 15 versions, but don't, don't leave it up to the director or the fans to choose the defended version. Give all the versions and let the, let, let the people get what they want. Yeah. Yeah, let the people have <laughs> what they want. Let them have virgins. Oh wait, versions. You said versions. Versions. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, you they can, can just either. listen to cake. Uh, do so. All right, uh, we're getting toward the end here. Do we want to say what our best and least, like our favorite and least favorite of this sort of stuff is? Like um, for me, it's right. Kingdom I, of Heaven's my favorite, and uh, the yeah. alien thing was my least favorite. I hated it. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So what? But oh, I'm curious about like. The alien thing, you didn't actually say what, like what, what really grinds your gears with, um, with well, alien part, part of it was finding out that it wasn't really James Cameron's idea. It was just the studio saying, Hey, let's put some of this cut footage back in here and sell it again. That right. annoyed me, but mm-hmm. also what they put in was absolutely not needed for that film yeah. to work the way it works. Not, you know, unimportant, uh, just a, just a, Hey, let's make you buy this DVD again. Kind of thing. Yeah. W- w- for a film that I otherwise consider to be a perfect action film, perfect science mm-hmm. fiction film. I love that movie. Adding this extra stuff made me not like it as much. And that's bad. That's bad news. So I didn't like that one at all. Um, in kingdom of heaven, heaven's case, it's just, it's so gloriously good with mm-hmm. the edit than it was without mm-hmm. it. And I, I don't know why, I don't know what they were smoking, I don't know why Ridley Scott's always bonking heads with studio execs. Like, what's the problem there? By this time, he's a very well-established, you know, core of the industry. Why do they have to keep fighting with him? I don't know, but um, but there you are. So I can go next. I, I have said many times that uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League is an abomination. It's mm-hmm. like I couldn't watch it. It was so, Interesting. you know, it was just such a I, well, changing the the uh, format on the screen is just mm-hmm. mind blowing to me that someone thought that was a good idea. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, as I've said many many times, like the Lord of the Rings could, if there was more, I would watch more. It is so, <laughs> in, it's just wonderful to me that you know m- my favorite movies of all time got this treatment and were able to be you know get like hours more of my favorite films just i I love that that's kind of a perfect Mm -hmm. storm with them though right i said it earlier but it's it's just like they knew what they were doing when they i I think the extended versions were in their heads a long time before the they finished filming but it also coincided with peter jackson wanting to have more more of this anyway so it both the artistic side and the financial side got served and i like that 
I wish yeah. that was true more often. That alien thing, that's, right, sucker. that's not that at all. That's some bullshit. <laughs> I'm not, and I'm pretty sure this <laughs> this new stuff with the AI upscaling stuff is less about Cameron being involved and more about studios. Oh, money, yeah. Money grab. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Ibit, what's your... Uh, what uh, mine, mine we've talked about before, but it's Blade Runner, and it's just the fact that the director's cut makes the character of Deckard so much deeper and more complex that it, it turns it into a brand new film. And... Uh, uh, I won't, you know, yeah, the original version, great nostalgia, grandparents, pizza, blah, blah, blah. But, um, uh, the director's cut and that, that changing of Deckard into a replicant or, or mm-hmm. adding the question, if he's a replicant, um, I think and, and you really disliked the meddling with star Wars. I disliked, you know, the, which one I disliked and that was going to be my worst was, um, was, was return of the Jedi and taking, Sebastian Shaw out and replacing with Hayden Christensen, I felt like was such oh, a yeah. such yeah. an egregious slap to the f- slap in ghost. the face to the actor. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah that's let annoying. me look at you with my own eyes uh, for the last time because I'm going to get replaced with the the teenager that yeah. we're using with my movies. young eyes. You'll see. see right. Today. Exactly. Yeah. That was um, really lame. I'm I still. That. It still makes me gasp when I get to the end of Return of the Jedi, and there's all of these people from other planets celebrating. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. like Top, toppling over the uh, the statues of the Emperor yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. And they got it's, rid of the Yub Yub song, which I, you know, it's not great, but yeah, I loved it as a kid. I wanted the Yub Yub. I didn't need a new disco version of of the Ewok song. No, I did not. You know what? We're I think we're all agreement on that. But I will say this: of all of the 25 year anniversary tweaks that he did to the Star Wars series for that 97 release. Empire yeah. Strikes Back came through the cleanest. And not just because yeah. they didn't add a ton, but what they did change enhanced some things. Like they made Cloud City seem cooler. It had windows. It had oh, right. vistas. Yes. Like there was there was cool stuff in there mm-hmm. and nothing got massively changed. So once again, yeah. the best star the Star Wars movie is still the best Star Wars movie regardless. I mean, that's that's the like the the hallmark of that is that I had to think about what was added for the special edition of Empire Strike ba- Strikes Back. Whereas the Han shooting first and the, the Sebastian Shaw replacement. I keep, is it really Sebastian Shaw? Is it really the same name as the guy from the X-Men? I think it is. Um, Sebastian Stan. No, Sebastian that is Stan? A, it's not Sebastian no, that's Stan. No, Winter Soldier. That's Winter Soldier. Hold okay. on. Okay. <laughs> is it really Sebastian Stan? Let's see. Who played, who played Vader? Who played, who played Vader? Vader? Who played Vader face? That's what I remember. Played, played Vader, Vader face. face. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, every actor, here we go. I think I found it. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, yeah, Sebastian Shaw is the name of a character in the Marvel Universe. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. okay. Yes, oh, 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 Shaw. oh, oh. Yeah. and you were, and Randy was, oh, I get, but now, yeah, the whole MCU thing just came crashing. Oh, down. I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. You were saying, you know, the Winter Soldier actor is Sebastian Stans. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. okay. No, you're right. No, Bob yeah. Anderson. That, no, no, that's the stunt guy. No, Sebastian Shaw is the name of the actor who played. You're old totally American right, Skywalker. Yeah, you're totally right. Bob Anderson was. The but guy I always questioned myself. I'm like, am I getting this guy confused with the uh, the the Marvel uh, mutant, uh, the, the the Black King or whatever he is? Right. Uh, uh, Dunaway, how about you? Yeah. What do you say? Oh, oh, sure. Why not? So I hate the director's cut of Minority Report. Just kidding. Um. So, like, 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 Ibit is hard to argue. About Blade Runner, the director's cut, I can't argue that, but I will tell you right up there for me was my enjoyment of Superman 2 when I watched the Donner cut. And it took away a lot of that that, that silliness that was in Superman Mm. 2 because I really enjoy Superman 1. Mm. Um, And it's a little more serious take. It's a little more somber. And when they put all that humor in the Superman 2 and the tone changed, I didn't care for that. So seeing Donner come back and go, here. Here's what I here's that. what I meant to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a very enjoyable movie, in my opinion, at this point. Right. Um, yeah, now, that's a good on one. the on the bad side, Donnie Darko, the director's cut, need to hear him talk so much. But I will say the most egregious uh, cut, which was a studio cut recently uh, on streaming, is when Disney cut out "When Love Is Gone" from the Muppets Christmas Carol. There's a song in there that's called "When Love Is Gone." Why did um, they cut that? Not out? everybody likes it. What's that? Why'd they cut it out? Um, I they for I believe I don't know if it was they didn't feel like it su- suited the the movie or something. But it just didn't hold up like the rest of them. I don't know exactly what Lame. the excuse was. So Lame. so uh, Henson's son said to Variety right. magazine that Disney right. lost the negatives for 
for it. So when they went to when they went to upscale the movie, ah, they, they they didn't have the oh, ability. They only to lost the negatives oh, for the song. That's the only part they lost. It wasn't nefarious. It was just. It sounds like horseshit. It sounds a little nefarious. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, the yeah. one part of this that we don't um, have. Sorry. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. The, the only part is the entire I, song. That's all we don't have. Weird. Yeah. I, have, I, have the, I have the VHS version. We can just upload it, Disney. Just contact me. We got it. Yeah. We got this, and man. Then James Cameron can AI up it to 4K <laughs> and look like shit. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's not By the a way, good, good call. There's, a, like there's a supposed to be an even newer version that's been released very recently that right. includes it back. They've added okay, when love has gone back to very good. Is that the one where they're, they're in the house and it's little Timmy and all that stuff. That, um, yeah, that, that is the story, but the song itself is when they're out uh, in there and he's going back through <laughs> his past and they're yeah. out there uh, skating around. Oh, uh, and, okay. Ice, ice skating. It's the, pre- it's the past one where he's grown up and it's the school and yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, he's kind of like a he's kind of in his or he's a young man. It's, he's a young man. It's before we get to love. yeah. It's before we get to come and in, come inside, man, and know me yeah. better. Before get that, to know me better, man. Yeah, I love that guy. By the way, when I was, I'll admit to this, I hadn't read Christmas Carol before that movie came out. I oh, see yeah. that movie, and when I finally read the book, I went, "Oh, right, there aren't two Marleys." Oh, right, <laughs> and Marley also had Marley. Stetler, Waldorf, right, yeah. but but the the movie had him sing to get to know and come and know me better, man. That whole thing that's yeah. all in the book. Like they pulled that straight out of there. So yeah. on the one hand, they were like tweaking it, and on the other hand, they were being really mm-hmm. realistic because I thought that big Muppet talked weird. Like who says yeah. that? Yeah, who says yeah. come yeah. on in and get yeah. to know me better, man? It's like nobody does, but <laughs> they're doing that book. Yeah, anyway, I yeah. get it. How do you decide to put Statler or Waldorf? You can't say, well, which yeah, one would you make Marley? You got to have them both. Yeah. yeah. And then the song, <laughs> Marley and Marley. Ooh, that whole thing. I yeah. got to watch that before the season's over. So I love good. that movie so much. Um, all right. Well, uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. What are your uh, favorites out there? What are your, uh, you know, what do you think the biggest mistakes in director's cuts are? Yeah. I'd yeah. love to hear it. Uh, send us an email, filmsack at gmail.com, and tell us your thoughts. You can also text us at 801 uh, 471 Do not forget that our next movie is one that you need to try to watch before January because it's probably going to go away, and that is The Arrival with Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Get right. on the arrival. Not Make sure. The not arrival. Except no substitutes. If yeah. you don't see Charlie Sheen in the first five minutes, you're watching the wrong one. That's if right. Amy Adams is talking. You're watching the wrong one. <laughs> yes. If Clint, if uh, Clint Bart, Bart Barton shows up and talks to Amy Adams and crosses yes. the DC MCU line. you've gone really line. far. Yeah. Into the wrong <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Forrest Whitaker is, is very doubtful about everything that's going on. You're yeah. in the wrong movie, okay? Maybe finish that one up and then right. watch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and don't get us wrong. Arrival, Steve, uh, the Villeneuve movie, is amazing. You should see it, yeah. yes, but yes, it's yeah. not the really same movie. movie. Um, anyway, but that's not what, with the, such urgency. Exactly. We'll do that next right. week. Uh, and that'll finish out our year. We're very excited about that. We hope you're having a fantastic holiday for me, for Brian, for Brian and for Randy. Keep it in. We'll see. Ugh, we'll see you next time. Get more at frogpants.com.